Behold, the great priest who in the days pleased God. Therefore, in accordance with his promise, the Lord gave him growth for the good of his people. Today is the memorial of St. Pius V, Pope and Pastor of our Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brethren, in order to worthily celebrate this Mass, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who chose your blessed Pope Pius V to preside over the whole people and benefit them by word of example, keep safe, we pray, by his intercession, the shepherds of your church, along the flocks entrusted to their care, and direct them in the way of eternal salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official at the Candace, that is the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, Go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. So this was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. As a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him, who will tell of his posterity, for his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with his scripture passage, he opened Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When he came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus and went out proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The Word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed our God, you peoples, loudly sound his praise. 
He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now all you who fear God while I declare what has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God who refused me not my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will praise him, I will, I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not, not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that no one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, my dear friends. In our traditional Prior about the Eucharist, we would always look on the Eucharist as our source of strength in our prayer. We took the Eucharist and received it in order to deepen our own way of adoration to our Lord Jesus Christ, which is what we call the most important way aspect also of our reception of the Eucharist, the deepening of our spiritual life, receiving the Eucharist at the center of our prayer and adoration with the Lord. But there is also different kinds of perspectives of which we could see the Eucharist in a different aspects about our own lives. The way Jesus presents himself in our gospel today, he is the Eucharist, the bread of life, the one that not only sustains our spiritual life, but is the one that increases our own particular faith. Our Christian faith is nourished by the Eucharist because in the Eucharist, we come to become reminded that Jesus, when he gives the bread to his people, he also gives his life and where can we find the life of jesus there is no other way that we can find his life but in the scriptures like in our first reading today philip was able to give nourishment and conversion to the eunuch by reading to him the scripture the prophet isaiah and when they're all together share the word of the prophet isaiah he was able to become enlightened because Philip was able to answer his question. Who is this lamb? Who is the one who laid down himself as a sacrifice? Philip, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, 
just simply told him it is Jesus Jesus is the lamb he is the sacrifice and so my dear friends in our day-to-day -day living the same as when Jesus appeared to his disciples in Emmaus they all open the scriptures together as they eat the bread as they shared the meal together and so it is also the Word of God and also partaking of the Eucharist when we could make Jesus come alive once again in our own very lives dear friends in these times of which we all together are staying in our particular homes when we are all together celebrating the Eucharist we shared the word of God and we also partake the bread of life at this point in time that we will not be able to receive Jesus sacramentally but we ourselves has been nourished by his word when we are able to deepen ourselves and reflect on his words Jesus comes alive once again he is alive in our hearts that our hearts will keep that fire burning again because when we try to put ourselves and meditate on the words in the scriptures we are able to make jesus alive once again in our hearts and so my dear friends let our adoration let our prayer in the eucharist let us ask and reflect on the word of God. This would make Jesus present once again in our lives. Let his word transform our hearts. Let his words become more tangible and present once again. When we read his word, we're able to recall the very comforting words that Jesus is telling us i am the bread of life he who comes to me will never hunger because i am the one who was sent by the father whoever receives me receives the father and will have life everlasting We turn now in prayer to God the Father, who from the generosity of his heart has sent his Son, Jesus, the bread of life. That the people of God, nourished by the Eucharist, may unite to persevere in the lives of faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord that through the worthy reception of the Eucharist, we may deepen our love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord, that we may not fail to share our earthly bread with those indeed, and so become like the self-giving Christ. Let us pray to the Lord, that those who are sick in mind and body may be strengthened by receiving the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. That the dead may share in the Lord's promised heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for Conchera Dabrowski, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. And for all the names and petitions written in our book of prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Silently we present our petitions to the Lord.
Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, guide in our journey and help us to walk in the path of your Son, Jesus, who is the bread of life. We ask this to Christ, our Lord. Blessed are God of all creation, for the goodness we have to spread in the fruit of which this is given in human and for me. Will be found to us the Father. Pray, my dear brethren, may sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for the activity of all his holy church. Accept the sacrifice from your people, we pray, O Lord, and make what is offered for your glory in honor of your blessed, highest V, a means to our eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty, our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are praised in the company of your saints and in the crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By the way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witness, we may run as victors in the race before us, and with them the imperishable crown of glory to Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and archangels, in all the great multitude of the saints who sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mary, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. The Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, to the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life. And we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At a Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, honored as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us now together pray the prayer to the intercession of our Holy Virgin of Guadalupe. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your son as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and the world and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear a cry to those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are a compassionate mother, health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. May the sacraments we have received, O Lord our God, stir up in us the fire of charity with which your blessed Pius V burned ardently as he gave himself unceasingly for your church. To Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Holy Mass has been offered in a goal in the peace and love 